gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, we're going to take the time because this is a long day for me. Um, I'm working on some notice of appeals. Let's get rid of that junk and let's get rid of that junk. We're going to pause this for a second. We're going to talk about this video only briefly. Okay. Um, and I'm going to make some comments, but the comments are not directed at the individual who did the video. I think his name is Christopher Hauser. Um, not directed at him, but it's directed at all of you with information such as what Mr. Hauser is publishing. Now, do want to let you guys know that I am about to play my music. So if you um, are allergic to music, I would say that you're going to have to go and get yourself one of those uh, vaccines. I hear that they are very good in drowning out music and other uh, natural emotions and natural feelings. And, you know, so go, go right ahead and get yourself an ejection as soon as possible. It will be in your best interest. We are going to... We're just going to be playing, okay? Because some of the songs, I, I didn't do this playlist. Y'all know who this is? Child, I was the this is Aloe Black. I ain't played Aloe or music in a while. So we going to get to my music. Thank you, Aloe. Ladies and gentlemen, this young man is the type of person that I would um, I would have conversations with. In other words, he's the type of person that I will get to know, he and his wife, because his personality. So, hey, hey, don't worry about it. I'm just mentioning I appreciate the young man's personality. I got to hear him and his wife do an interview a couple of years ago, and a lot of respect. All right, let's go ahead. We're going to talk about some 1099As and 1099Cs, and I'm going to tell you I don't, 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 don't think that you ain't got to do some research. Ain't that right, Al? Allo Black, ladies and gentlemen. He's singing family. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to pause Al for a minute because I need to be able to talk to you and we're going to play this video just for a second. Need to be able to talk to you. I'm going to explain something to you. We're not going to play the young man's whole video because a lot of it is information that mm, I'm going to suggest you do Good some morning, research. You, few, those of you those are still, still hanging around. around. Oh, uh, now, thanks, I will tell back, you. Uh, here's, here's, hold on. Hold on. He does talk, talk about being a chosen one. You know the scriptures say chosen ones? Yeah, he does talk about that at the beginning. So we're going to skip that because everybody's idea of what is and is not a chosen I just had a two-hour conversation with someone yesterday wanting to tell me that the Bible was written this way and that way to fit this situation. And I'm like, would you please stop with that bull crap? Sorry, the initial pinning of the Bible was pay attention. We went backwards at first. 1475 BCE, time of Moses, y'all. 1475 BCE. Well, are you saying that was the first book ever written? Ain't nobody said the Bible was the first book ever written. No one has ever said that the first book ever written was the Bible. <laughs> Sorry, people. I don't know where people are getting this junk from. Lord have mercy. What we're saying is that the Bible is inspired of God, not man. The Bible was not written by man. Wait, what? What did you just say? How you gonna say it ain't written by man when Jesus and then James and John and Paul? Well, first, Jesus didn't write a single scripture in the Bible. And second, Paul may have wrote the items down, but he wrote what he was told to write. He didn't put his own ideas down. Do you understand what inspired means? Oh yeah, I looked it up and it, no, not that definition of inspired. The Bible's definition of inspired. Ladies and gentlemen, you cannot look for an English definition for a biblical understanding. Why? Because the Bible explains to you what it means. So you don't get to use your own interpretation. Well, I feel it means this, and I feel it. you can have your feelings all day long, but your feelings ain't got nothing to do with it. You hear me, Tina Turner? Your feelings ain't got nothing to do with it, Ike. 
So, we're going to let this young man talk. Like I said at the beginning, he talks about Chosen and all that. We want to talk about 1099s. He's going to show you something, and then I'm going to tell you the legitimacy of what he's going to talk about. So pay attention! And I'm going to tell you the legitimacy based on personal experiences, and pay attention! I'm going to take you back to when it happened. The, the, the unchosen. unchosen. If you're watching, if you're this, watching video, this video, then you are... You are one of the see, chosen. chosen. See, like I said, that's uh, what he talks about. Or your police. Or your police. Uh, and that's uh -oh. okay. You're chosen. They police. Chosen too. Too. Now, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. The, the, the one thing hey, I, I say about Mr. Chris, he tells you guys he's been incarcerated before. Now, I don't know what he was incarcerated for, but he's doing a video on 1099s. And you know, everybody was doing the 1099 OIDs and they went to jail. And I kept telling you guys they didn't go to jail for doing a 1099. He's going to show you, <laughs> and he's going to talk about it. You don't go to jail for doing a 1099. You go to jail for doing a 1099 OID and not having the correct information because you're signing the documents under penalty of perjury, that the information is true and correct. Okay? Let's, trust me, I've read the cases, every single one of them. And all they have to do is do a corrective filing. I made a mistake, Your Honor. I made a mistake and I wasn't trying to defraud nobody. Now, I, no, no, hold on now. We got to correct that. Your mama, now I tried to defraud that hoe. Tried to tried to make her have an abortion when you were, you see? So that was the only time I ever tried to defraud someone. What you, what you y'all doing? No, get the man cool off me. I ain't going to, I just do Okay, sorry, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to let the young man speak. Uh, you uh, need to you need hear, to what's, hear going what's going on. on. You can't you stop can't it. Stop it. You need to hear it anyway. It anyway. <laughs> so, uh, like I say, like man, I say, anybody, man, anybody, any of this information, this information I'm putting, I'm out, putting here, out here, uh, if you can, if prove, you can it prove, wrong, it wrong, prove it wrong, prove it wrong, man. man. Oh, wait, 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 hold on. Let me let you know something about Mr. Chris. I do like the fact that he, unlike many of you, has a grasp and an understanding, a presumption. Mr. Chris is saying, this is my presumption. I'm bringing forth the presumption because there is no evidence on the record that says I can't do what I'm doing. And so if you want to rebut my presumption, by all means, here's your opportunity. Prove me wrong. And so, Mr. Chris, let's see if your presumption is a valid one. Shall we entertain Mr. Chris, everybody? Mr. Chris, you have the floor, and I am not going to speak again until he starts talking about looking at the code. Okay? So I'm going to remain silent in the free exercise of my constitutional right. Wait, I thought you said there are no such thing as constitutional rights. That the Constitution didn't give you a right, it only secured those rights that were inalienable, already existing. And, 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 and so, 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 so what do you mean by constitutional right? Well, technically, I was just making a reference to the so-called Miranda so-called right, that the Supreme Court somehow stated that Miranda could give somebody a right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, send me a send video, video proving it wrong, and, it wrong, and I'll put it on, I'll this, put channel. It on this channel. Uh, but prove it. Prove it. Uh, I, I said I wasn't so, going to interrupt so. him. I said I wasn't going to interrupt him, but I have to interrupt him. Because I promise you, get this video to him because I'm going to help him with his challenge. Okay, one second. The information, the information I'm going to share today, I didn't want to share to the general, to the general uh, viewer. Uh, only uh, those only that those can, that stick, can around stick around long enough. Long enough uh, uh, because, because using, using this, this in the wrong in the way, way, in a greedy, in a greedy type, type way... way uh, it doesn't ever, uh, doesn't go, over ever too go over well. too well. You need to you use, need to it, use it uh, conservatively. conservatively. You need to you use, need to it, use wisely. it wisely. Uh, uh, and that is and the that 1099A. A. A. Acquisition, Acquisition or abandonment of secured property. property. The other one the is the 1099C, which is cancellation of debt. That's what I want to go over today, folks. This may be a long video. I don't know. It depends on how much I get into. But... The, the yeah. man One second, y'all. But he showed me how to do this, okay? And uh, his example was through automobiles. 
And what he was doing is he was taking these 1099 A's to the dealership and he was buying one brand new car every month. He bought his wife a Cadillac. And then when he, when he seen that he could do that, he uh, started doing it every month. But what he was doing is he got greedy. Uh, he was using this to buy a vehicle. He would like say, take, he'd take you to the dealership, pick you one out. Uh, you'd pick it out and then what he would do is he'd buy it with the 1099A. And then what he would do is turn around and sell it to you for 60% of the cost. And he was making pretty good money at this. Uh, and then after about nine or 10 months of doing this, uh, a couple of agents showed up on his doorstep, or at least that's what he, uh, I apologize. I have to interrupt ladies and gentlemen, I, we're going to let him show you a copy of what they were doing, but I do need to explain to you that they will always give you a warning. So when he says the agent showed up at his doorstep, they, I promise you that was not the first time they showed up. That was not the first warning he received. What he was doing was 100% legal. There was no law against it. As a matter of fact, it's done all the time. You guys just don't realize it. We're going to talk about it because I'm about to prove what he's saying. Okay? We are going to talk about it because I'm going to prove what he's saying so you guys can show the young man the video. When he says that they showed up and they warned him, they literally said you're doing too much. But they didn't say you're doing too much. But they literally said you're doing too much. You need to stop. Same thing I told you. They sent a police officer to me when I was doing the land patent, trying to save the home. He said I was doing too much. I need to stop. I said, excuse me? He says you're doing too much. You need to stop. That wasn't two warnings. That was just one. Then he came back two months later. He said the same thing, pulled up, parked the car, said, you're doing too much. You need to stop. Now, he said more than that, but he did make that statement. Now, I had already known that they warned you twice. I done told you once. I done told you twice. Don't let me have to tell you again. That's what the two warnings are. And ladies and gentlemen, we're going to let this young man talk, and then we're going to show you the document, okay? Come on, Mr. Chris, it's on you. They told me they were. Uh, they told him, they asked him for his name. He's like, man, Chris, I thought I was busted. Uh, he, they, uh, one officer told me his name, and then the other one took a couple steps back, and they were standing at the front door. He was in his bathrobe. It's like 8.30 in the morning. And uh, the agent asked him his name. He told the agent his name. He said, then the agent leaned in and said, look, Mr. James, nobody needs a brand new car every month. Uh, limit your, your purchases to one new vehicle per year, per adult, per household. He said, then they walked away. I got I to gotta stop it one more again. I need to let you guys know. I told you all from the beginning, back in 2011, when we first started doing the hour spell money orders. I said that you have the right to your necessities. However, one car per adult at a time. One house per adult at a time. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't have the right to two houses, but can you purchase two houses? Of course you can. But you don't have the right to two houses, but you do have the right to property. One house, government pays you for it. That's the new deal. That's the new deal. One car. That's the new deal. Go back and reread the deal that was made in 1933. It was called the new deal for a reason. They guaranteed that they would take care of your necessities. So they provided the means. I keep telling you guys, you keep saying it on video, 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 video. It's just that I can't think like you think. So although I'm thinking I'm explaining it clearly, and straightforward, eh, you guys are not getting it. So you got people like this that will give you the information in generic terms. Then I come in and I tell you, yeah, this is what this is what that means. This is why that is. So the reason why they said nobody needs more than one car, because you can't drive two cars at the same time. I told you there was a young lady named Amanda. I don't know whatever happened to Amanda. 
okay? But Amanda went and tried to buy three vehicles, one for her hubby, one for her daughter, and one for herself. Three vehicles. They came and got her for fraud. She didn't understand the reason why they wanted her for fraud. And uh, the attorney, she said her attorney wanted me to come testify. The attorney thought that if I come testify, they could get me for conspiracy and, you know, blah, blah, blah. I said, sure, I'll come testify. But during the time of me going and testifying, I was moving to Puerto Rico. I never heard back from Amanda, honestly. So I don't know what happened to Amanda, more than likely a plea agreement. But ladies and gentlemen, I'll say it again. You cannot, you cannot use the process to get more than what you need. Well, I need two homes. I need a summer home, a winter home, and a fall home, and a spring home. I also need a avenue home, a terrace home. I need a way home, and I need a union home, and I need a park home. I need all kind of homes on every single name street that you can think of. I need a home with a P.O. box associated with it. I need a home. You see, ladies and gentlemen, your needs, those are not needs. Those are wants. I told you, my father explained to me when I was a child, and he did it in a very unique way, the difference between wanting something and needing something. Go ahead, and if you guys could see my life, you see that I don't have much. I have what I need. I don't have what I want. There are a lot of things that I want. Now, we're getting ready to take all of this to the next level. I promise you, start starting today, starting today. We're going all the way. Okay? We're getting ready to take this to the next level. Not because of Mr. Chris's video. No, no, no. <laughs> We're getting ready to take this to the next level because I told you guys I'm creating a corporation that is going to be designed for strictly one thing, and we are going to work with you and for you. It's, you're going to have to pay this organization. You're not going to have to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars, no, because we don't care about the percentage. We are going to charge a flat fee. Why? Because the salaried employees will be on salary, and so we will average it out. So roughly $1,500, I think, will be the highest because, you know, that's me. I don't do things higher than that. Oh, by the way, I have a young lady, Mrs. Erickson. I have not forgotten about you, okay? I am setting aside tax credit for you for double the value. No, actually, it's triple. I had already decided on triple, but double the value of what you are experiencing. But I assure you, it will be a whole lot more than triple the value. But I, I have not forgotten about you. You're going to be included. I just need you to know that. I will send you an email letting you know. All right. With that being said, oh, the person who just called me, who I had to interrupt everything for, he wanted me to give him a shout-out because he says he wants to know at least I was talking about him and everything. And I told him, you don't even have to worry about me saying your name. If I'm talking about you, you're going to recognize that I'm talking about you. Ladies and gentlemen, he recognizes that I'm talking about him without me even saying his name. But he wanted me to shout his name out. I ain't shouting no mother name. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, hold on. So he said that was at the close to the end of the year, October, November, something like that. He said, so I had to drive my trash truck around till, till uh, January before I could do this. But see, greed caught up to him. Uh, the dealership that I dealt with, greed caught up with them. Uh, you cannot abuse this. Uh, you know, if you're going to get a new car, get a new car. You know, and then drive it. Uh, you know, drive it at least till the warranty wears out. I wouldn't even get Sorry, I'm going to pause them again. What y'all don't realize, I've met too many people who have brand new cars with the hour style money order. I told you all. I went to Puerto Rico. Hour style money order. Guy was handing me the keys to the car. He wasn't trying to set me up, trying to entrap me. He was literally giving me the keys to the car, and I told him, no, I wanted an end console DVD player with navigation. And it had to be at least seven inches. And they were going to charge me $3,000 for that. I said, I don't care about the money as long as that's what I have. And then I wanted the sound system. I didn't want that car, ladies and gentlemen. I don't like Toyotas. Although I probably will end up getting a Prius because of gas prices. <laughs> anyway, I don't like Toyotas. I just, I was never a Toyota person. Why? Because Toyota had the largest market share. 
See, I don't go with what everybody else goes with. I, I've had Hondas. I like Hondas. Hondas are a piece of junk, but I like Hondas. Hondas are a very cheap car, ladies and gentlemen. Hondas are a very cheap car. I don't care if you have a Honda. It's the most elegant piece of junk I've ever had because it's a piece of junk. Same thing with Toyota. When you get to the nuts and bolts of a vehicle, you'll see that that's all they are. The material is very flimsy, very cheap on purpose. So stop thinking that you're buying something new. Stop thinking you have to keep up with the Joneses because the Joneses move too fast. None of y'all can catch up to the Joneses. That's why they're always ahead of you. That's why everybody's always trying to keep up with them. You don't ever see the Joneses trying to keep up with nobody else. So pay attention. It's called keeping up with the Joneses. It ain't, hey, man, why the Joneses trying to keep up with you? You ain't never heard nobody say that, so stop that. So you ain't got to keep up with the Joneses. You ain't got to sit up there to commit fraud or anything just to kick it. Y- y- you ain't got to try to keep up with the Joneses, so stop it. Chris, go ahead and finish telling these people. Now, I want you to get to the form. Now, he's going to explain briefly about his friend getting greedy. I don't presume it was his friend getting greedy. I think his friend was like you all. Oh no! Could you do it for me and show me how to do it? Because you know I don't want to. I don't really trust it. I don't want to go to jail. You know I. I just think. Could you do, 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 do it for, for me? Okay. Uh, if you do it for me, how much do you want me to pay you? Well, can can I not pay you from the? Okay, let's do it that way. And so that's why he's getting more than one car. He's not trying to be like Jay Leno. He's not trying to be like Tim Allen and have these warehouses full of cars. But how do you think they did it? Anyway, he's not trying to be like them. He was helping people out. And, well, if I'm going to do this for you, all right, I'll help you. I kept telling people, and I, people would ask me to do the same thing, and I would tell them, I can't do that. I can only do it one at a time, and this I ain't doing, because once I do this, what am I going to have for myself? Again, it didn't make sense. When I was in Puerto Rico, there was a young man, his name was Max. And Max had a vehicle that he had acquired from the dealership when our sell money order. No, I don't think he used an hour sell money order. I think he used something similar to the hour sell money order. Um, and they were trying to come back and get the vehicle, but they couldn't. Ladies and gentlemen, they get paid. You just have to do things the right way to help them get paid. And because that's all they're interested in is the payment. They're not interested in somebody figuring out the system. Ladies and gentlemen, the system is already there. They're not interested in somebody figuring out the system. There are too many people doing videos like me who are explaining to you how to use the system. Okay, there are certain things I will not explain to you because I don't want people taking advantage of it. Like, I was just talking to somebody about something that is illegal in the United States. But it's illegal in the United States. So I explained to them how it's legal in the United States, even though it's illegal in the United States. I had to let them know what the technicality, what the loophole is. There are certain things I will not give you the loophole to because some of you will go ahead and get yourself in a lot of trouble thinking you can use that loophole that I mentioned to you because you don't know the full dynamics of why it's a loophole. So no, I won't do that because it's too much explaining and I ain't got time. My name ain't Lucy and my name ain't Ricky. I ain't got no explaining to do, okay? get one every year i just drive it till the warranty ran out and get a new one <clears throat> okay so <clears throat> but here we go this is a 1099a okay uh, i want y'all to pay attention to this document uh i'm going to show you what one looks like and then a little later on i'll come back and explain to you how to fill one out this is a 10 okay ladies and gentlemen the first thing i need you all to do and i need you to understand it says United States Treasury. This is the 1111 Constitutional Ave, Constitution Avenue, Northwest, Washington, D.C., 20224. Okay, now this is 2014. This lets you know how old it is, 2014. He has the EIN number here, EIN number for the Treasury. And then he has where his Social Security number was. He blacked it out so y'all can't see because it ain't none of y'all business. Then he has his name as the receiver this is the data this is the receiver and it's 1099a 
And then he has his address and Tennessee and you know what? He's a Tennessee person. And then he has, I think this is the, well, I don't know what this number is. He, he'll explain it, but this is where he would put the VIN and stuff information. Then he would put, no, he puts the VIN and stuff here. Sorry. He explains that. I haven't done a 1099A since 2012. Sorry. Not what I do anymore. Okay, and then he puts the date here, and then he puts the amount of the collateral. So let's let him explain. 1099A. This is one of the ones for $4 million that I sent to the Treasury. Okay, if you'll notice, take a really close look, you'll notice, uh, or take a snapshot of this. I've covered up my Social Security number, or their Social Security number. But if you look at this document, it's simple. This comes, you have to get them from the, the, the IRS, okay? And you have to, uh, they'll come in three copies. You have to have them from the IRS because they scan these things, okay? Uh, and then there's three copies, if you'll know. Okay. Basically, when you order this, you have to, you can only get the 1099A, 1099C, all of the 1099s, they have to come directly. All of the 1099s, all of the 1099s, the A, the OID, the C, the B, the D, the E, the F, the G, the H, the I, the NITs, the miscellaneous, all of it has to come directly from the IRS. It has a special ink that goes through their computers and it's able to read that section. Okay, special ink. It's what these things are printed on. You cannot duplicate that ink because there's some specialties in it. So you won't be able to handle that, okay? Got a lot to talk to you guys about. What I need you guys to pay attention to, because it is absolutely necessary, is you order these forms. I would order 200. You don't need to order more than 200 because you're not going to be doing 200 of these a year. I would order 200. Just 200. Mr. Chris says that you need to pay attention. Do this. Put your vehicle information um, because it's insurance. So you, need, you don't um, do this right here, but you do this and you use this for your insurance on your property. Now, he does go ahead and he explains it and I give him some credit on the way that he explains how he talks to a judge and explains that. However, most judges are not going to understand what he's doing because they're stupid. Okay? They're, they're just stupid. So there's a lot more detail to this. Ladies and gentlemen, on our website, you can look up the 1099As, the 1099 process. It's there already. We have documents that have been donated to the organization. We don't do it. But we've had documents that we put up there that have been donated for you to do your own research. Okay, so that you can do your own research. All right, thank you, Mr. Chris, for bringing this video up. And ladies and gentlemen, if you want to see Mr. Chris's video, because I want to let you know the process. He goes in the video and he explains how he was able to acquire a car, his friend was able to acquire a car, how people have been able to acquire cars. That's the video. 1099-A and 1099-C. That's all you got to put in. You see, I just put 1099-A, 1099-C. And that's how I found this video. It's one of the very first ones that comes up. Okay, go there. Look at his video. And he explains it. Now, there are a lot of comments, people saying all kind of interesting things. These are not the people I care about. Okay. What do you mean these are not the people you care about? Well, these are the leeches. Leeches? Yeah, these are the people that just want the information. Okay. Hi, Chris. I am so grateful for all you are you're doing are doing. And I must say, in honor... It's shining. Oh. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, that's why I turned the comments off. Now, I'm working on an appeal, and this is the appeal day. So that's what this document is for. But I do need to explain some things to you. So let me close some things out. Got to close that out. Got to close that out. Got to close that out. And whew, uh, all of these hard drives. See, that's the thing y'all need to be understanding I just there's so much information on my computers that is that's why I'm slowed down I, those hard drives one of them is an eight terabyte hard drive eight terabytes that's right and the other two are four terabyte hard drives 
well, no, no. One of them is a four terabyte, and the other one is a two terabyte hard drive because it's the SSD. The solid state air drive, I mean, hard drive? Air drive. That's what it is, an air dryer. It's an air dryer. Ladies and gentlemen, we're, we're going to talk about 1099s in a second. I just need to explain a couple of things, what's been going on, so that you guys, so that you guys understand. Amazon. Amazon sent me some items. I ordered them. But I returned the items. Notified Amazon, hey, I'm returning this bull crap. What's the reason? Oh, this junk don't work. So I, I returned it to them. But the problem is I couldn't return it until I received the replacement item. And when I received the replacement item, I put all the items in one box, stuck on one of their labels, and sent it to them because their warehouse is supposed to go through the box, sort it out, and everything. Well, Amazon, after a month, UPS has lost the package. But I documented all six items in there, almost $1,000 worth of items in that one pack. So I said, hey, Amazon, hey, hey, what up, homie? Uh, I sent these items to you. And they said, well, no, you, you got to wait. You can't, you know, we need more than two weeks. It's been two weeks, and that's our normal process. But, no, you, you're, you're gonna, you are going to need to wait longer. All right, mother." I said, really? You gonna treat me like that? Okay. And they said, all right. Then you get off my phone, mother. And I said, but I'm a, I said, get off my phone. And they hung up on me. I'm not joking. They hung up on me. So I called them back the next week. I said, look, hey, 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 hey. UPS says, oh, you you sent this item back to us. We already refunded you for that item. You already refunded me. Oh God. You mean to tell me I sent the wrong one? I, I, I need to have that sent back. Well, you gotta call them and ask them. So I called UPS say, I need to have that package sent back to me. It appears that I put the wrong item in the box. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, UPS says, okay, we'll have it sent back to you. I said, whew, thank you. Only to call UPS the next day just to confirm they were sending it back to me. They said, you're not the shipper. Amazon's the shipper, so we're sending it to them. You're doing what? And so I called Amazon. Hey, they said to send it to you, but the wrong item's in the box. I need you guys to send me back that wrong item. Okay, we'll send it back to you as soon as we get it. Oh, okay, thank you. You sure? Yep, we're going to send it back. Got a special little ticket right up here. Okay, but what about the other items that's in the box? Well, we'll go ahead and log all of those. Okay, thank you very much. And then UPS notifies us that they cannot find the box. It's in Las Vegas at their hub, but they cannot find it. Oh, that's a shame. Isn't it a shame? Okay, so I called Amazon back and I said, hey, Amazon, hey, hey my, my package is lost. But y'all know that already, right? Well, how come I ain't received my refund for y'all losing my package? They said, look here, homie, we didn't lose nothing. You sent that through UPS. You sent it under the wrong label, so that's your fault. I said, my fault? Yeah, because the policy says you got to send it under the label we send you. I said, excuse me, where's that policy at? I said, I got the label right here. What does it say on this label that I can only put in this box the item listed on this, on this label? And you know what they told me? They say that's fair. I said, really, give me a second. Let me go get one of these labels and let me see if I can see that on there. Ooh, doggy, you know that ain't nowhere on this label? Because this label is printed by UPS. So I, as I'm getting the label, the woman hung up on me. I'm like, what the fuck? What the heck, doggy? And she, like, just hung up on me. So I called the corporate office, spoke to a representative there. The corporate office, you know, the woman hung up on me, too. I said, you must be misunderstanding me. And before I could say me, she hung up. Oh, doggy. So I went on and I, I emailed Jeff Bezos. I am not joking. I emailed Jeff Bezos. I've done it before. Jeff Bezos doesn't see my email. But I let Jeff Bezos know the situation. I was in detail explaining to him. And I said, there's no way in the world your representative is going to tell me that I'm responsible and that the $1,000, I just have to eat, that I got to file a claim with UPS when you're the shipper and you're the one who has to file the claim? I said, no, you have insurance. Send me your insurance carrier information. I'll file my claim with them. That was sent to them yesterday. Uh, one of their employees contacted me back and they notified me, sir, we're sorry that you had this experience. We will work with you. We'll take a look. We'll get back with you in a couple of days. I said, thank you for your respect. Thank you for being respectful. Here's the situation. 
as of this morning, they have refunded all six of the items. As of this morning, they have refunded all six of the items. So let me say something about Amazon because I'm not putting Amazon down. I was going, uh, man, I was going to let Amazon know because I told them I will let all my viewers know. And I'll let all the subscribers who have channels know to let everybody know about Amazon. Ladies and gentlemen, unlike Walmart, and I, I have been getting products from Walmart, but unlike Walmart, Amazon has been faithful. Amazon has worked with me even though I've had four representatives this week hang up on me, just literally hang up. Their executive staff and their supervisorial staff have worked everything out. So, sorry, Amazon is a juggernaut. But I will say one thing about Amazon, they have policies in place that helps get rid of a lot of headaches. Yes, 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 I had a headache. Yes, 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 I had to pursue it. But I knew that if I pursued it and let them know how, because I told them, guys, I will forgive you of your debt. I will do the 1099C. I will waive that, forgive you of your debt, and let you guys be responsible for the taxes. And I'll accept the credits. But I'm going to charge you for the inconvenience. I'm going to charge you my fee. Ladies and gentlemen, you guys don't know, but that's a discounted rate underneath the video. The 550 is discount. Look, I was talking to a guy today. He was mentioning a situation where some guys did something while they were in prison. And they sent what they sent from prison to a bank. The bank took what they sent because what they sent was legal. It wasn't illegal. What they sent was legal. The bank took it and deposited it, not into their account, but into the bank's account. And the bank took credit for it and set up a, pay attention, trust account for the gentleman. I'm not joking with you. They set up a trust account for the gentleman. Uh, one of them is out of jail. The other one is on his way out of jail this month. But the bank hasn't given them access to the trust account. So they contacted me. And so I tried to, I was explaining to the guy, that's the call that just came in. I explained to the guy exactly what the banks were doing, what they, how they were operating and why, because of what they did, they wouldn't have access. But if they did it this way, they'll have access. And I said, when he said, you know what? I didn't think about it like, but yeah, that'll work. I said, and that's why law firms have been trying to solicit me to come work for them as a consultant. It's because of the way I see law and the way I see loopholes and how I don't interpret the law. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't, the law is not made to be interpreted, and that's the problem with people. The law is supposed to say what it says, just like I told a person yesterday. The Bible, you can't interpret the Bible. The Bible says what it says. If he says don't do something, he doesn't mean, but if you feel like it, you can go do it anyway. He says don't do it, he means don't do it. When he says you shall not kill, did he say you could kill in self-defense? Well, actually, he does say that a person has the right to defend themselves. So does that mean they have the right to self-defense? Ladies and gentlemen, when he says don't kill, he means don't kill. He says vengeance belongs to him. Now, he does talk about the Avengers, so he does leave avenue for that, but that's an Avenger of death. And there was only certain circumstances for which somebody could take revenge, okay? But the same thing with the law. So I gave that young man that. So now we're going to talk about the 1099s, and we're going to talk about Mr. Chris's video so that you guys will get what's going on, because Mr. Chris was correct when he – uh-oh, that's the wrong one. This is the one I need. Mr. Chris was correct when he told you guys. No, this ain't the one I need. It is this one. Um, he was correct when he told you guys about the 1099. So we're going to enlarge this up so that we can explain. Now, Mind you, you're going to have to read the instructions on the 1099. You just are going to have to read it. You need to know what you're doing and what you're talking about. You just can't do something just to be doing it. So let me explain what's going on. The treasury is not the creditor. He is the creditor. The funds come from the treasury. Remember, there is no money. It's all credit why he did this one for $1 million. Now, I'm not telling you to do this right here. You're not having me advocate this. 
go and listen to the video on how they did it with the car dealership, how he says how to enter the information, okay? He's correct. Ladies and gentlemen, what I'm going to ask you to do is I want you to understand because he's going to try to explain it as best he can. You have your from and to persons. So this is the from with their address, the to person with their address. You have an account. This is the account. So from to account, then you have a date. Uh-oh, you got a from to account and date? Woo-wee, that's four items. Then you have a dollar amount. Woo-wee, that's five items. The only thing you don't have, pay attention. Ladies and gentlemen, I need you all to pay attention. We're going to pull up a uh, 1099. So give me a second. Remember I said you got to order these. So we're going to pull up a 1099. Uh-oh, I, I, I shut down the wrong thing uh, because this is Mac and Windows. I'm trying to minimize this, so I have to hit escape. But we're going to take the 1099. Let's see. This ain't the 1099. I'm in the wrong window. Let's see if it's this one. Forms and publications. Forms and publications? Forms and publications. Forms and publications? Forms and publications. Hey, Allo, where you at, homie? Allo's back with family, y'all. Uh-oh, he can't because I, I turned down the I turned off the Bluetooth. Okay? I'm a bottom of my guys. Okay, I'm apologizing. I don't know, my, my speaker just turned off. So let's, uh, I'm turning it on now. And now I'm turning on my, let's do that. Now it has switched to the speaker. I don't know why, this list ain't pulling up. This is 1099, let's see. And give me a second to get the speaker going. We are doing this one. Connect. Okay, we have 1099. And we want this right here. Thank you, young man. In the broken heart, there's a soul that I need. Ladies and gentlemen, I done told y'all. This is my boy, Allo Black. I have a lot of respect for the young man. All right, here we go. Proceeds from brokers and barter exchange transactions. Ladies and gentlemen, your mortgage-backed securities, this is what the broker and the securitization trustee are doing. Y'all need to pay attention. But we're going to go to form 1099A. Let's get rid of that. And my family... And I say, oh, 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 All right. Attention, ladies and gentlemen. They let you know that it can only be printed on the form sent by the IRS. So if you go to the IRS, they will tell you where you can order the forms, ladies and gentlemen. Order the forms. Please note that copy B and other copies of this form, which appear in black, may be downloaded and printed and used to satisfy the requirements provided for the providing information to the recipient. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a lot of music on here, and some of it is jazz, and we're going to skip past the jazz. I don't listen to jazz. It's just on my system, okay? And Luke the band girl saying, give me a reason. That's what I usually tell people. Don't just, don't just sit up there and do whatever you want to do. Give me a reason. So, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm going to ask that you do so that you get it, because a lot of people don't understand, download this form, take that B section, send it to everybody in their grandmama, and keep a copy, send it to everybody in their grandmama whom you're going to be, I mean, the, the C section, the C section. Mama, he, he's talking about C sections. Did you have a C section when I was born because of the size of my head? Oh, did you? Oh, that, what, what, how did it feel? Oh, oh, it wasn't a C-section anymore, huh? When, what section was it? The whole section? It filled and everything? Oh, lordy. Oh, it was that, oh, mama, you didn't tell me I caused you that much pain. I'm still causing you pain. Every day. 
Oh, then that means I'm doing my job. Ain't nothing changed. All right. All right. Peace out, G. Ladies and gentlemen, what you're going to do is the 1099C. We're going to talk about that in a minute. The 1099C, the forgiveness of debt. You're going to send a copy of the 1099C, the forgiveness of debt. Pay attention, ladies and gentlemen. You're going to send a copy of the 1099C, the forgiveness of debt, to all of the people whom there is a debt. You just need to forgive them and send them a copy of the 1099C. Because what you're going to do is eventually when you get the 1099C back from the IRS, you're going to file the 1099C. Now, there is a shortcut to following the 1099C and having to order the IRS form. Because you don't want to order the IRS form, do you? I know. So there's a shortcut. I'm going to show you about the shortcut in a second. So I need you to pay attention. That was the A. Now I need to get the C. Cancellation of debt. Uh-oh, info copy only. We don't want the info copy. We want the cancellation of debt. And then I'm going to download the info copy, but I want the cancellation of debt. Okay, I, I didn't download them before. So now I have the cancellation of debt. Okay, now this tells you the same thing as the other one told you, the A, B, and C. Okay, do not cut or separate forms on this page. Do not cut or separate forms. Why? Because they can't put them through the scanner. Okay? So do not cut. You just make a copy of this and send it to the other party. That's why you can take this copy and send it to the other party. This is copy B of the 1099C. Okay? Cancellation of Gibbet. Okay. Send him alone and outside. No one to love. Luther Vandross, everybody. The late, great Luther. Got to give Luther his credit, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry that the system used Luther the way they did. Because y'all know what the system does. They convert everybody to being homosexuals. I didn't say that. They said that. Okay? And then once they use you up, like George Michaels or Tevin Campbell, then they discard you. They give you a couple of bones every once in a while, but that's the system. So, sorry, people, just the way it is. That's why I walked so far away from that stupid system, because that's what they do. And you don't want them doing that to you, so stay away from being stars and being entertainers, ladies and gentlemen. I want you all to go back and listen to the video where it said I'm in the business of selling debt. Please understand. Now, this one is for informational purposes only. I want you all to understand, this is not the official form. This is just informational purposes only. This is not one that you fill out, okay? But this is the current form, okay? This is the current form. So I'm going to suggest that those of you who need a copy of this, that you go ahead and take care of business. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to finish with our video. Let me go ahead and um, do the cancellation of debt thing again. Yeah, we're going to, I got to put informational on this one because I need it, okay, because we're going to do some demonstration in the future for you guys, okay? So one second. This is Luther again, ladies and gentlemen. Two in a row. Do I have, oh, that's because I don't have a uh, random on. So he's going to say, if I didn't know better. And he's going to be talking about if he didn't know better. He would understand who you were for, for reals. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to, we have 1099C. Uh, one, zero, one, zero. Uh oh, zero nine nine. C on L I N E F R E E. If I didn't know better, ladies and gentlemen, you said that you were mine. If I didn't know better, sorry, if he didn't know better, ladies and gentlemen, he would know who you were. He should have known who you were from the very beginning. That's what he's trying to say. If I didn't know better, I would know who you was. I would have realized who you was. <sighs> TurboTax, okay? TurboTax, free edition. Zero federal, zero state, zero blah, blah, to file 
offer is available for simple tax returns only. Okay, then we don't want that one. We want a website that allows you to file your taxes. File, he filed 1099 forms online free for free. File your 1099 for free. Free tax USA. Pay attention, ladies and gentlemen. It's the electronic form. Because it's the electronic form, it's automatically a scannable. The paper form is not. That's why you need their junk. If I didn't know better, okay? This is for you all, giving you this information. This is the way around. Okay, Social Security 1099. I ain't seen one of these Social Security 1099s, ladies and gentlemen. I just need y'all to pay attention. Has anybody know about the Social Security 1099? Because I don't. Shame, shame, shame. Now, I know it's going to probably say something that uh, it's talking about taking Social Security out of your paycheck. Uh, 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 uh. We know it's more than that. Okay? No upgrades or advanced tax filing. Federal filing is always zero dollars. Federal filing is always zero dollars. No upgrades for advanced tax filing. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what their pricing is. Okay, it says it starts at fourteen dollars. Deluxe edition, tax edition, self employment taxes, ten ninety nine taxes. So I'm gonna click on the ten ninety nine. If I didn't know better. See, you can't click on these, and I thought you could, but you can't. That's just a window. So let's click on, let's start. Start a free return. We're going to, we going to, we ain't going to do this right now. We got to, with Luther in my background, we're just going to talk. This is just me pointing you guys in the direction you need to go. So let me go back and talk about the 1099-Cs and the 1099 A's so that you guys get it, because I know a lot of you are still not getting it. Ladies and gentlemen, the 1099-C, 1099-A's, it's the hour style money order. The only thing Chris was doing, if you watch the video, is he was signing it on the back. Now, he said he signed it that way. There's no rule that you need to sign it that way. It's just an endorsement. Now, that's not the signature is not the endorsement. Signature is the authorization. That 1099 does not have the endorsement pay to the order of. So just add pay to the order of, okay? That's all you got to do, right next to where you're They indeed go in and take possession of the land that Jehovah, the God of your forefathers, is giving you. Okay. Now, you the reason why the I am playing that in my background as loud as I just did, because that's what plays in my ear at night when I'm asleep. That is the book of Deuteronomy. But it's only set to where it plays stuff like that and not, uh, if I didn't know better. Okay, that doesn't play at night. Okay. Just that simple. All right. I need you guys to hold on one more time. My dogs are barking. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. You need to um, go ahead and bring this to a close. So once you A for B, the 1099, what, you didn't know the 1099 process was A for B? Didn't know the hour stop money order was A for B? Ladies and gentlemen. The whole new deal is A for V, accepted for value. That's the agreement. It's called the new deal. Do you remember what Chris said at the beginning of this video? Prove to me I can't do it this way. Ladies and gentlemen, all you got to do is follow the rules. Follow the yellow brick road. Follow the rules, ladies and gentlemen. SOS band. They're saying just be good to me. They don't care about what the mother folks say. Many of you guys are going to take this process and you're going to abuse it. That's what he's warning you about. That's what I've warned you about. Many of you, man, your videos are too long. That's your problem. Because that means you're a shortcutter. Man, I look for every shortcut in the world. And those shortcuts is why you're in trouble right now. Stupid mother. 
Nigga, don't be calling me stupid. No, stupid is what stupid does. Boys called you stupid. His mama called you stupid. The box of chocolate called you stupid. I didn't call you stupid, you stupid mother. I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. Those of you who don't want to take the time to listen to the entire video, those of you who said, man, I can't stand a man takes that mother be doing it. He'd be playing music in the background. I just did about 30 videos where about maybe 90% of them had no music whatsoever. 90%. So don't tell me I play music all the time. I just wasn't in a music mood. But you know, we got SOS in my background, and they like, same old survivors. No, same old motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Same old. Yeah, I know I got it. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's funny to me that people think that, man, you be cursing. If you find me cursing on a single video, I will stop doing videos permanently. You have my word. Never will I ever utter anybody's curse word. Now, mind you, I don't even say the H-E-double-L word. You'll even hear me say things like H-E-double-L or H-E-triple-L. But you'll never hear me say it. Why? Because I believe the word is a curse word. Why? Because of the context in which it is used. But, ladies and gentlemen, words, cursing, it is my culture, how I grew up. My mother did not allow us to curse in her house. Now, my older sister, she did. As she got older, she cursed. Oh, mama, me, she cursing. Okay, but we weren't allowed to. So when I say I don't curse, you must understand that is my culture. I don't even sound like doing it. So those of you who think that that's what I do, go, go talk to your mama about it. Maybe she could explain it to you. Then the other thing is, the antics, the joking around, it ain't you got to accept me for who I is. That ain't the type of thing I'm saying right here because that's the television and this, this so-called environment in which we live now and talking about acceptance. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't have to accept me for who I am. There ain't no law requiring you accept me. Just like there ain't no law requiring I accept you. Man, I accept you. Mm-hmm. I accept you, all right. I accept that you are stupid mother, and if it wasn't for that exception, you'd be all right, okay? So, ladies and gentlemen, I just need all of you to take your time. Go over the details. Find the time, make the time, because if you made the time, instead of thinking that you don't have any time and you're in a rush, that's why nothing is working for you, because you don't want to take the time. Ladies and gentlemen, I have taken greater than an hour and a half just to do this one video. Okay, actually two hours. Go look at the timestamp from when I first started and look at the timestamp. It's 152. Just to give you this information, I don't have to do this. I have other work I need to do. But I thought it was so important that I bring this to your attention, me and the assist and, and Luke the Vandross and so forth, that I'm bringing it to your attention. Yes, 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 I'm revealing some things in this video that I told myself because I told y'all I'm not going to talk about this stuff. So I've done some things and mentioned some things that most of you didn't even know. There was no law against you writing on that form. Remember, it's an electronic form. It gets scanned in. They don't even get to see your signature on the computer. Even when you pay attention, even when you sit up there, pay attention, Let's, let's, let's pull Chris back up, y'all. i got one more thing I need to show y'all. Even when you write void. So let's pull Chris up. Let me make sure you guys understand something. Those of you who end up going to jail because you did a 1099, you did it the wrong way or anything like that, you see this word void right up there? It's in red. Void. Checking that box doesn't mean it's void. The document is void because it says void on the document. Go ahead and look at a check that's void. Does it have any check boxes? Does the check have a check box that says void? No, it just has void on the document. Y'all really need to pay attention to what's going on. Don't let nobody tell you, because this is not under penalty of perjury. It's the other attachments that's under penalty. That's what you need to be afraid of. All right? I got to go, y'all. Hey, thank you, S. Oh, hey, yes. Take care, everybody.